the Irish landscape is a very rich, varied and very, very beautiful landscape. We engage with it, our ancestors have engaged with it, and some of the evidence of our ancestors' engagement with the landscape is still in evidence today. An important part of our rural landscape heritage is the wrought iron field gate. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that gate and of course it's two beautiful cut stone piers. This photograph was taken in 1947 and shows Jack and Julia O'Gorman of Raheen de Noor Forge near Greg the Manor, County Kilkenny. Jack was a rural blacksmith and you can see him here putting a rim banding on a cartwheel. Blacksmiths as well as making and repairing farm machinery, made wrought iron gates. These gates are unique to our country and are a very important part of our legacy. However, with the needs of modern farming, particularly for wider gate openings to accommodate machinery, and the current insatiable appetite for scrap metal, these gates are under threat. During the short video, we're going to look at a number of gates, visit a farmer to look at how the old wrought iron gate can be adapted in a modern context, and we'll also visit a blacksmith to look at traditional methods of repairing and extending wrought iron gates. I have traveled extensively throughout the country surveying gates. I've also surveyed extensively here in County Kilkenny. And what has amazed me is the sheer variety of local design construction. The variety that blacksmiths have come up with in terms of design solutions to making gates. This particular gate was made at Kappa Forge in Innesteeg, County Kilkenny. It carries the maker's name, Lee. And the Lee insignia is, you can identify those gates by this latch and you can see many of them dotted throughout the local area here. The traditional method here using wrought iron, we have mortise and tenon joints here, and we have some riveting. And that would be the traditional way of joining these materials together. I'd like to introduce you to another gate. This is another lee gate from the, the forge at Kappa. Again, you can see it from its distinctive, almost heart-shaped latch. Again, set on its two beautiful round piers with capping intact. This gate is in great condition and so are the two piers. You can see that the edges are rounded on these bars. This gate was made from banding from cartwheels. Oh Noel, how are you? How are you? Sham, how are you keeping? I'm good. How are you doing? Not too bad. Oh, you're a passionate man about the wrought iron gate. You've done a bit of work with a few of them here. Yes. What you drop down are two girders. And yeah, you weld it on two, a couple of two steel RSJ and just yeah. just weld on hangouts onto them and a latch on that one. And yeah, very very good. Yeah. And this one has been extended slightly as well. Yeah, there's a couple of feet put into it because yeah. they're generally about eight feet wide, and you would need them maybe twelve feet wide for modern machinery. Yeah. So yeah. you just put in a bars yeah. of the same width. But here, I think, is a good example, Noel, of um, where you've used a traditional wrought iron gate. Yes. With uh, the old tubular. Yes, I suppose it, gate. it closes the width, the actual yeah. distance there pretty, yeah. pretty nicely, yes. And those gates kind of will outlast that tube by for a sure. couple of hundred years. Abs for yeah. sure, and no galvanised. And you've bought a few in as well. I, I buy them if I see them, yeah, yeah, but it's getting difficult to buy them now because yeah. the value of them has been realised and yeah. they're yeah. making a bit of money now, so <laughs> people yeah. with them should use them, I suppose. So, no, this is a gate that you relocated, did you? No, the, that gate hung there, but it was yeah. too narrow, and yeah. I just widened it and moved the pillar out, out here to accommodate. The extra width is 12 feet wide now, it was 8 feet wide. Oh, right. Yeah. And w were those the two original pillars? They were, they were yeah. both there, but it yeah. was too narrow for machinery, and just to retain it, I had to widen yeah. it. You welded on an extension piece, and just I... Two, two and a half feet, I think, uh, yeah. are the, yeah. uh, the pieces into the gate, and they're the same width as the original bars. So, yeah. you know. Well, I think that was one of the important things that I noticed when I was up here before with you, that this is one of the tastier jobs I've seen. Is it? That, yeah, that you went to the bother of getting the same yeah, width yeah. of bar. Well, I'd say you know? 
they were probably inch and a half flat and that's yeah. inch and a half which is readily available you yeah. know it's, yeah. you know it's readily available yeah. in some yeah. cases and though visually it doesn't look very well if yeah. that bar is fatter yes. or thicker yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and they're welded here yeah the traditional way in augate style as you know would be to overlap that with another wrought iron bar and perhaps to rivet it, rivet it. either they side did, they yeah. didn't even rivet it they just overlapped them and they hammered them together when they were hot and they did stick. Yeah, they forge welded them. We don't all, I suppose, have the facility to, to do forge welding or to, yeah. to do the rivets, but yeah. uh, you've done a very neat job on this mm. one. And retain the two piers as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Noel, thanks again. Okay, Sean. We'll talk okay. to you. I'm here in the, the workshop of Paul Devlin and Christine Phelan in Crut, uh, Castle Comer, County Kilkenny. Uh, they run a forge called Pristine Ironwork. And it's like an Aladdin's cave here with gates. And maybe, Paul, before we start, Paul is going to demonstrate two techniques to us today. But before we start, we might go and have a look at we'll a look some at of the them, gates yeah. outside. There's some okay. outside, yeah. yeah. Paul, this one here is a very interesting gate made from flat uh, wheel, wheel, wheel banding. banding. Yeah. I love them gates because they're real vernacular. They, they really say vernacular, Irish vernacular to me. Yeah. Because they're made by, by the people, by the material they had. Yeah, so this was about the only material available to this blacksmith at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, you can see the, the latch even was made from a binding. Yeah. The rounded one end and flattened the other end. And yeah. A nice, a nice latch. Yeah. There's an interesting gusset on it here. They put a, a right angle weld here. Yeah. And two rivets in there. They returned the right angle. Yeah, rather than just, just depend on one rivet here. Yeah. They made a, they in made order a for stability there. Yeah. 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 Can we have a look at this gate? Oh, yeah, just yeah. to have a look at some of the. Um, finished work that you've done or completed on this a beautiful old entrance gate again it's, it's work in progress um we just mm -hmm. hung between temporary piers and this uh this is the traditional form like here the uh, form of repair if you like to it, overlap it's a piece I sandwiched this top rail mm -hmm. in between two pieces of wrought iron uh -huh. uh, forge welded them here and then riveted them over in, in through the back side okay yeah yeah and on this one then one of the vertical rails was missing are part of it. A number yeah, of them are missing here. This is, this have one done, but I'm, I'm going to do the rest. And I just made part of a top rail mm -hmm. and then um, riveted it on at the back. Uh -huh. So you okay. don't see the rivets at the front. You just rivet them at the back. Okay. Yeah. And this is wrought iron again. All, all the repairs I do is is done with wrought iron. Uh huh. You can use pure iron, but mm -hmm. I, I try and use the traditional material. And it's typical of a farm entrance gate. It's a typical yeah. vernacular gate, yeah. um, an entrance gate more so yeah. than, a, than a field or a yard yeah. gate. Yeah. Today you're going to show us two traditional techniques of joining wrought iron together. Yeah. The first one you're going to uh, demonstrate is the fire weld. And that is the joining of two pieces of metal together to become yeah. one. Two pieces of wrought iron like this. Yeah. And I'm going to join them together with a forge weld. Okay. And then we'll rivet that piece onto a top rail. to get them to join together like that and then when you hammer them out they become the same thickness uh -huh. so we're going to do that now okay see the, the small sparks there now coming so they're coming very near welding heat now but the two pieces have to be at welding heat at the same time So they're they're stuck at that. Yeah. So then they've I put them in and I put a good welding heat on them this way. That's a lovely job. And we'll lovely rivet job. that onto the top rail. I, I make 
wrought iron rivet. So that's a made wrought iron rivet. All right, and so before it. we came on air, as you say, here's one I made earlier. Yeah, is that this right? One I made yeah. Earlier, yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah. I'm just going to show um, the riveting of this. Yeah. Usually you leave twice the diameter of the rivet sticking out to make the head. Okay. And, and the heads on, on these vernacular gates that have the head on the front. Yeah. So the head will be on the front and the hammered end will be on the back. That's the front then. You have the, mm. the head there and the rail behind. Yeah. That's a beautiful so job, Paul. Yeah. So you've demonstrated the two main methods two of main joining methods. Yeah. Uh, yeah. wrought iron together yes, one in is the traditional method. A forge weld. Yeah. And the other is a rivet. Nice. Well, thank you very much, Paul. That's it. It's okay, been a then. great and very, very illuminating. Much. Yeah. Thank you. Right, and we'll meet again. Meet again. And yeah. the best of luck with the vernacular. Yeah. Forge wrought iron field gate. Thanks very much, yeah. yeah. Pleasure. I hope you've gotten something of value from this short video. I've travelled extensively throughout the country and met with many, many farmers who have genuine goodwill and respect towards this very important part and unique part of our landscape heritage. What can we do to preserve these beautiful gates and piers? If you have a wrought iron gate and its piers intact and hanging, and the entrance is proving too narrow for modern machinery, why not preserve it and open up a new field entrance nearby? I know that that's a lot of bother and time, but as they say, ni veach a lehead aun arish, the likes of these will not be seen again. And in that context, I think it's worth preserving them, not alone for history's sake, but for the future, for those who will come after us. If you have old forged wrought iron gates lying around the yard and farm, you and I know that they can be very heavy and awkward if they're not hung properly. Why not hang the gate stock that we have? And this will give the wrought iron gate a new lease of life. If you have made a new wider opening, why not use two wrought iron gates hung opposite each other? This will secure a wider gate opening. The farmers in the following two images have hung two wrought iron gates opposite each other and put down a central removable metal closing style. These are just some of the adaptations that can be made to ensure that the wrought iron gate lives on in the modern context. If you have a particularly nice set of piers, a fine set of piers and a gate, and the gate is in need of repair, why not have it repaired in the traditional manner that both respects the material itself, which is wrought iron, and the craftsmanship of the original maker? After all, this is our history. This is our heritage. And it is our responsibility. Thank you very much for taking the time and the best of luck. Mm -hmm.